The human brain is one of the most complicated objects known to man. How the brain works in a unified way has puzzled scientists and physicians for thousands of years. One recent discovery is that inside the human brain are hundreds of millions of sensory organelles called magnetosomes. Magnetosomes are cellular structures containing magnetite Fe3O4 crystals. These small 10 to 600 nanometer wide ferromagnetic crystals are created in the brain and arranged into chains 15 to 20 long. Magnetosomes are biologic bar magnets that behave like tiny compass needles and align to magnetic fields, having magnetic orientation energies in the geomagnetic field 20 to 150 times higher than background thermal energy. Magnetosomes are another component that adds to the complexity of the human brain, and now scientists are beginning to realize how the interaction of magnetic fields relates to consciousness. Hi, I'm your host Stefan, and today we'll discuss how electromagnetic fields, or EMFs, influence the human brain. Each magnetosome is a chain of magnetite crystals, and surrounding these crystals is a cytoscaffold which keeps them in line and constrained against clumping together. Cytoskeleton ligatures connect the magnetosome to the bilayer lipid protein membrane of a brain cell. Being connected to the membrane of brain cells, when electromagnetic fields vibrate the magnetite chains housed inside magnetosomes, the brain cell is also vibrated at the same frequency as the electromagnetic field. These vibrations, if strong enough, stimulate brain cells to send a message of stress to the hypothalamus. The brain adapts by releasing hormones to induce apoptosis, heal the tissues, and reestablish balance. Brain cells release this stress signal to the hypothalamus because, just as a building can collapse with the right resonant frequency, so too can cells and cellular structures. If the vibratory adaptation stress induced by electromagnetic fields is too large, then for best survival an intolerance to electromagnetic fields develops. If the intolerance is ignored and environmental conditions remain unchanged, then stress overload leads to disease and finally death. Magnetite crystals are very resistant and relatively inert and it is a complex metabolic process which requires a lot of energy to either create or destroy Fe3O4. With every breath, fresh oxygen-rich blood is transported in ferritin proteins by blood cells to the brain and spinal envelope known as the pia mater. The pia mater along with the dura mater have the greatest concentration of magnetosomes in the body at a density of 100 million magnetite crystals per gram of tissue. The dense blood vessels of the pia mater follow the folds and extend deep into the surface of the brain. Outside the pia mater, cerebral spinal fluid flows which contains choline and electrolytes, protecting the brain and clearing waste to the lymphatic system. Underneath the cerebral spinal fluid and pia mater is the brain itself, the cells of which also contain magnetosomes at a lower density of 5 million magnetite crystals per gram of tissue. In an average adult human brain weighing 1.3 kilograms, there are 6.5 billion magnetite crystals or more in use for cognition and for sensitivity to magnetic fields. Being relatively stable, the Earth's geomagnetic field doesn't generate much magnetosome torque on brain cells. Many animals like birds and sea turtles use the relatively stable geomagnetic field for navigational purposes, and ancient Native Americans were famous for their ability to navigate using their internal compass. In addition to the planetary magnetic field we all reside in, man-made AC and DC electricity generate magnetic fields of varying strengths. If artificial electromagnetic fields are greater in strength than the Earth's geomagnetic field at a particular location, then magnetosome chains will align to the resultant total field. Depending on the relative amplitudes of the magnetic fields, this could result in a complete magnetosome alignment with an artificial magnetic field. Rotating magnetic fields of strength far greater than the Earth's geomagnetic field will whip magnetite chains around in brain cells. For a 60 Hz field, as is common in North America, this magnetosome torquing on brain cells would happen 60 times a second. 50 and 60 Hz electricity is common worldwide, and when in close proximity to a 50 or 60 Hz power grid, brain magnetosomes will vibrate with the man-made magnetic field pulsations. Independently or combined with other stressors, if the body is unable to adapt to increasing EMF stress, a dis-ease to electromagnetic fields develops. If stress from electromagnetic fields is too great for the recovery abilities of the body, then apoptosis, or programmed cell death, will increase in the brain faster than regeneration can follow and neurologic conditions develop. 
Enzymes released during apoptosis dissolve all cellular structures, including the cytoscaffolding that keeps magnetite crystals aligned and safe inside a magnetosome. Magnetite crystals being very resistive and inert are unaffected by the enzymes and when free of confining structures clump together into abrasive chunks. Increased waste from apoptosis and magnetite clumping flood into the cerebrospinal fluid, altering acetylcholine neurotransmitter concentrations and increasing lymphatic stress on the body. It has been observed many times that those suffering from neurologic diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's had a much greater concentration of magnetite and ferritin in brain tissues, up to 15 times more than normal controls. To reduce magnetically induced stress in the brain to below an individual's adaptation potential, exposure to high strength electromagnetic fields needs to be reduced. The Earth's geomagnetic field is the background electromagnetic field that humanity has evolved to and for best health continues to evolve to. One hallmark symptom of Alzheimer's and common to Parkinson's is memory loss. Loss of deep memories like friends, family, who they are and how they lived. Memory retrieval and learning are connected to brain waves, which have been measured as reduced in people with neurologic conditions. The human brain emits electromagnetic brainwave harmonics in the range of 0 to 100 Hz. During memory retrieval and learning, 4 to 8 Hz theta brainwaves increase in amplitude, and individuals with strong theta brainwaves have better memory. Conversely, patients with Alzheimer's, dementia, and other neurologic conditions have decreasing brainwave frequencies and amplitudes, with 0 to 4 Hz delta brainwaves increasing at the expense of higher frequency 8 to 12 Hz alpha brainwaves. Overlapping naturally with human brain waves are Schumann resonance electromagnetic waves at primary frequencies of 7.8, 14, 20, 26, and 32 Hertz. Schumann resonance waves are ultra low frequency EM waves generated by high energy events like lightning, earthquakes, ionospheric radiation, and solar events like coronal mass ejections. Schumann electromagnetic fields propagate in the ground and atmosphere all the way up to the ionosphere, 50 to 100 kilometers above ground. The foundational mode of the Schumann resonance at 7.8 Hz has a high Q factor and resonates very well with very little energy loss. 7.8 Hz is a high frequency theta brainwave. In Schumann resonance electromagnetic waves, energy and information is stored and distributed globally. Compared to the continuous presence of man-made electromagnetic fields from the power grid, cell towers, and home appliances, EMF stress exposure to the geomagnetic field warping from lightning and solar storms was infrequent but did occur, being a random acute stress occasionally dealt with and adapted to. Now with continuous broadcasts of many electromagnetic waves, EMFs have become a chronic stress for many. If propagating stronger than the geomagnetic field in high population density areas, man-made electromagnetic fields disrupt the normal working conditions of magnetosomes, thereby altering consciousness. Impaired human brainwave patterns manifest symptomatically as depression, anxiety, insomnia, dementia, and other mental health ailments. Consciousness is a subject-object relationship. I see the tree. I feel the water. Without perception and response, individual consciousness does not exist. Similarly, a magnetic field is a subject-object relationship. A magnetic field has a positive and negative charge, which creates a flow of energy and information from one charge to the other. A simple magnetic field is a rudimentary consciousness, and it's the complex interactions of many magnetic fields that creates more advanced consciousness. The interaction between the uncountable numbers of overlapping magnetic fields, from all the electrons and magnetosomes in the body to the Earth's geomagnetic field, gives rise to all consciousness. Anything that changes magnetic fields fundamentally changes consciousness. Scientists have been learning how to manipulate brain cells, memories, and other aspects of consciousness for many decades now, and neuroscientists from Harvard have developed a technique that can manipulate neural activity with a single injection. And in 2016, Magneto was developed, a genetically engineered protein fused to the paramagnetic region of ferritin, an iron transporting protein. Magneto is delivered to brain nerve cells with a simple injected virus. Short DNA sequences signal cells to transport the magneto proteins to targeted nerve cell membranes and insert them into it. In effect, the genetically modified magneto protein contains tiny magnets which insert themselves into nerve cells, and the application of a magnetic field of sufficient strength 
vibrates magnetoproteins so that the cells produce nervous impulses and alter the release of neurotransmitters. Magnetoproteins inserted into brain cell membranes aren't as strong as magnetosomes, but can still resonate to a magnetic field of sufficient strength. Ferritin, the iron transporting protein that Magneto holds onto, is found in much higher concentrations in brain tissue from people with neurologic problems like Alzheimer's. In the increasingly busy electromagnetic environment, learning how to protect yourself from stressful and harmful EMFs is important for staying your healthiest and most vital. With how quickly magnetic fields lose strength due to the inverse square law, if the human body field everyone generates is strongest in their occupied space, then other EMF sources drown out into noise. The stronger the exogenous EMF, the stronger the endogenous biofield must be in order to stay dominant. Cultivating strong endogenous brain waves is possible with basic health and wellness practices. Walking, meditating, exercising, yoga, grounding, stretching, swimming, and sleeping are all important aspects of life that when engaged with, cultivate a deeper and more balanced conscious experience. Herbs like green tea and chamomile also help propagate 8 to 12 Hz alpha waves and increase endogenous brainwave amplitudes. All electromagnetic fields hitting the brain are data that the brain processes, and establishing a breathing meditation practice improves your ability to filter these random thoughts and choose your state of mind. The most important message I can leave you with is to be mindful of how you feel. If you don't feel good, engage in wellness practices that make you feel better. All of the research discussed here is linked in the video description. Share any questions or comments you have on this topic in the comments below. And as I continue to research into these topics further, I will share my findings on wildfreeorganic.com and also here on my YouTube. Please subscribe to both to stay notified. And if you made it here, help the world out and share this knowledge with others. It's important everyone is fully aware of the effects magnetic fields have on their health and consciousness and to know that simple wellness practices help them remain sovereign in body and mind. Peace to the world and glory to the heroes. Namaste.